my understanding, I moved here in 79. A lot of people don't know her, but uh, the city of Lakewood was actually, um, years ago, was uh, deemed a Sports Illustrated City of the Year. up riding skateboards, running the streets with right, right. Gilbert, with the other kids. Uh, it was it was it was all good back then, you know what I mean? It was a nice community neighborhood mix, different races getting along. My name is Daniel. I'm from Mexico, a uh, little town they call Huamuxtitlan Guerrero. Okay, I came to uh, Los Angeles in 1988. When I first when I first came, you know, because I've been working at uh, this liquor store since 1988, 89, you know, things things have been changed. You know, it was it was very rough. A long time ago, it was really 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 bad. But now things have been changed. You know, the Spanish community and black community they uh, they getting together, and uh, you know, I see a lot of changes, and I think it's good for for everybody. When uh, Vicky comes to the store. She always uh, want to make sure she uh, she buy the drinks for for everyone in the, in, the, in the house. Bag of chips for the kids. Every time when she comes, she always think about family first, and then she grab her stuff. like to roll a place that you can't go you better watch your hoe in my hood where them tweakers live on site at night they just might fight i wonder how they live that life in my hood i was like the normal kid outside playing every day you know neighborhood homies and shit i was low-key bad for real. I remember me and the homies outside and we always used to see people smoking and shit. So our badasses picked up a cigarette off the ground, nigga. We started fucking around with it, trying to light it and smoke that shit, nigga. I went home, my mama smelled me. She said, let me smell your hands. Boy, she whooped my ass. <laughs> but you know, it's outside kid shit, you know, that's what I was seeing. You know, as a kid, whatever you see for real, you just, you feel me, you damn near try that shit. I knew I was something though, cause when I see my daddy treated me. Like, every time he'd pull up and shit, neighbors coming outside and shit, I'm like, you know what's going on? Is the president around here or something? I'm not knowing, I'm just a kid, you feel me? Growing up right here, I was just always looking for some shit to get into. My, uh, my mom, she, she had a dude at the time, and, you know, he was the club. I probably was like, I don't know how old. Young J though. He was the blood of me and shit. Me and the homie, we started stealing his weed. Feel me the rest. History again, you know? Man, got the collab coming in, Hell Pro Club. Make sure y'all stay tuned. Another one. <laughs> and hell, man, Young OG. But it's cool in it, never knew what it is Baby, say your name, I'm true to this And who to blame for your bougie We can do it big She listen when I talk, know who she against It don't cost to break you off 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 
to them play your ways. There's nothing I can do, I was raised this way. Never fade away, stand tall and you will get it. Let's get paid, homies all on a mission. She told me I can get it, never play the game. I listen how she feeling, take the pain away. Oh, I'll give her some pain, that's the feeling when I'm in it. If your bitch don't listen, have her pay me a visit. She did feeling on her body. By the looks, you can tell that she's a hottie. Let's party. Girl, sip this drink, she's horny. I'm trying to get it, then skate. I bet she feel it when I'm in it. Can be anywhere, but she's here for a minute, and I get it. Underwear when I'm finished. Can go anywhere, but she called me to hit it, and I did it. It don't cost to break you home. It don't cost to break you home. She wanted you, but she chose the G. I made my move, nothing you can do. You took her out to eat, I took her to the room. You thought she wanted you, but she chose the G. I made my move, nothing you can do. You took her out to eat, I took her to the room. I made my move. Right now, we at a place that hold a close uh, spot in my heart. It's my old barber shop right here. G Man lost his life at uh, Long Live G Man, rest in peace G Man. I like that shit tatted on me. This is my nigga logo right here. Billionaire Barber Group. If you know, you know for real, you know. You know, it was just some crazy shit, you know. This is my nigga though. I was like, 12th grade, you feel me, senior year, but I was coming to fuck with my nigga like every day. This the big homie that was just putting nigga on game and shit for real, you know. So it's, it's real important to me that I, uh, you know, that I come right here and I, I, I pay my condolences. Aside from, you know, catching one that day myself, you feel me? Like three niggas walked in and just basically shot the barbershop up, you feel me? Ken, Susie, must have been some scary moments out here in the city of Bellflower. We're on Walnut Avenue, right near the cross of Clark. You can see that right there in front of what appears to be some sort of small store. That is the debris that was left over after the shooting had happened. And the county fire units that were out here treated the wounded and took them to local hospitals right now where they're being... Uh, taken care of. You can see this large amount of Sheriff's Department out here right now. Crime scene is set up. Again, this is on Walnut, right near the cross of Clark. You can see some uh, officers right there blocking off the street. Right now, they have no information that they're passing along to us about the shooting, but we do know four people shot, all of them transported to local hospitals. Their conditions unknown to us right now, and the Sheriff's Department out here just starting a very large investigation. My nigga cutting hair, he not know what's going on. I'm right here just sitting down chilling, you feel me? Niggas just coming, you know? It is what it is type shit, you know? That was a real nigga though. He a nigga that was like, he'd take his shirt off for a nigga for real, you know? My nigga G-Man was a solid nigga. Shit, I thought I was gonna lose my life that day, you feel me? I was the first nigga that got shot for real. So, nigga, that day, look, I'm gonna tell you how it went, right? So that day, I'm coming to bar, I, I was coming here every day for real, so it was like a normal day for me. But that day, you feel me? I kind of come to the barber shop, nigga. I just walked in. I'm like, gee, what up? Whatever, whatever. Nigga, like, you know, ask him if I can roll some weed up. Well, I asked him for, for a belt. Well, you, know, you know, I'm right. I'm right asking him to roll some weed up. So I started rolling the weed up. And I went to the back to get the weed and shit. When I got the weed, I seen a, uh, a red fair gum. And I seen a red belt. I'm like, ooh, this motherfucker hard. You feel me? Whatever, whatever. I see the belt, I'm, I went back in there with the weed, and I asked G, like, hey, G, what's up with that red belt? You know I'm going to the uh, YG show this weekend. Let a nigga, you know, let a nigga wear it, whatever, whatever. He like, yeah, it's good, whatever, big old pimp. That was his favorite shit. He called a nigga big old pimp, you feel me? Like, he, he the reason I, 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 like, got connected with YG. Like, YG, little brother in his home, you know, they, 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 they live, like, where I was from, for real. But, like, he, he, like, from the same city type shit as far as, like, Compton, so... I was dating a girl at the time that liked YG, and, and I wanted like, to hit that nigga YG up to like see if he could help me ask her to prom, right? So my barber G-Man, he was connected with YG. He like, hit that nigga up, man. He gonna, he, gonna, he gonna look out, he gonna take care of you. So nigga, I hit the nigga up. He like, he like, 
I, I basically sent him to th throw the poster up, nigga. It's me holding a poster, asking my girl to prom, you feel me? And then YG put it on his page, nigga. It's back in like 2013, so YG, like, at the peak of his career, you feel me? But I was big, you feel me, as far as for me. I'm thinking I'm impressing my girl, like, nigga. She like, oh my God, you feel me? That was something major for me, but all because my nigga G-Man told me, like, hit the nigga up, like, he, he knew the type of nigga he was, and he was gonna look out for me, you feel me? So I always make sure I salute and think about G-Man whenever I'm like, in the same room as like, wherever the case is, because he a nigga that, you feel me? You know, he was a nigga that looked out for me in that situation, but right here, nigga, Shit went in right here. It came out right there, you feel me? I took one, played dead type shit. I'm thinking, nigga, it's about to be over with. All they had to do is really give me one more time. That's probably like the most. Nigga done been through some trauma, but that probably was the most like, you feel me? Then in there, the trauma situation, like, you feel me? Clock is ticking type situation, you feel me? So I'm thankful to be here for my nigga, long live my nigga G Man. That's a solid nigga. Doing like, you know, a little bit of content and shit or, you know, assets, nigga like to call it, you know, just finishing up. I be telling niggas though, uh, I be telling niggas all the time, like, you the, you the Nate dog of your family, you feel me? Like, a nigga like me, and I, it took me a minute, like, even understand, like, how, how, to, how to break this down and explain it, but, like, I be telling niggas, like, you the Nate dog of your family, bro, like, you first generation, you feel me, so... You know, nigga, your story kind of ain't my story, you feel me? I got to do a little bit of straightening, you feel me, with the business and shit, you feel me? Rather than, like, another nigga, like, he got to establish the business and really just create that foundation and ground level for the family, you feel me? In my sense, like, I'm at least thankful for Pops for laying that foundation, and even though it's a little bit of little screws, I know what got to be, you know, you know, screwed, screwed, you know, screwed in type shit, you know? So, um... Uh, you know, I be telling niggas, you know, I, I understand I'm second generation. That don't mean that, like, I'm uh, complacent, you feel me? But it just mean, you know, like, I'm not, I don't got the desire to be no big-ass pop star, you feel me? Just because, nigga, I know what they did to my pops for real or just how the business go with my pops, you feel me? So my whole thing is, is just to um, kind of let in the legacy be like, have his own, you know, place when it comes to this West Coast, you know, G-Funk music, when it comes to the West Side, you know, just classic music period. Like, when you really think about the West Coast, you're able to, you know, tap into the Nate Dog music, and then somebody be like, hey, you know, you got a son with a whoop, and then it, it, it give you that same feel, but like a newer, you know, newer spin to it, you feel me, which is now, which is present, where we live in, you feel me? Hell yeah, you know, we just dropped that, uh, that Doggy Child EP today. Put my son on the cover of that shit, look. That motherfucker bang. Five, five G-Funk classics, nigga. I just feel like niggas that was doing G-Funk, they forcing that shit, it ain't like organic, nigga. I don't really get that feel, or niggas sampling some shit. I wanna hear some, ooh, nigga, this, this that feel, you know? So, I found this producer. You know, I hit him up like, yo, nigga, I need that right there. Take that down, send it my way. He sent it my way, nigga, I recorded. I recorded them five. I really, really recorded like six records in like nigga a week. Uh nigga, I heard that nigga Tupac recorded All Eyes on Me in like a week or some shit or some nigga. I just was feeling juice, nigga. Got them beats. I'm like, oh, this shit knocking. Made all five of these. You feel me? When Nigel was about eight years old. I found some paperwork, some tablets, where he was writing his own. I told his dad about it, and his dad said, good. When I first heard his songs, I was so happy. I knew he had the voice, but he was more like rapping. And I told him, I said, Nige, I said, you sound like your dad. I said, maybe you could sing. He didn't comment on it or anything, you know. But he said, it's coming. You know, he had college on his mind. And I knew he was very, what you call, uh, athletic. And I knew for a fact 
that Nigel was very, very smart. He was book smart in school. He was like his mom. He would finish his work at school in the class so fast till the teacher had to give him more work to do because he would be the class clown. You know? See, Nigel was very, he was off into basketball until he went to Lakewood High. I was, you know, I, hey, I didn't miss a game, not one. And uh, matter of fact, I remember many, I remember many times I would be in the middle, Nate be on my left side, Rhoda be on my right side. And when he take that ball and make a shot, before he make that shot, I said, two for Gangan. I, I was just, he called me Gangan. He said, I said, hit, I said, hit two for Gangan, two for Gangan. And he look at me, and I look at his mom, then I look at his dad, and it's like, hmm, his dad, his dad be like, okay, gang, gang. And so he would make two, he would hit, he would make it. Like I said, he was born on his, on her due date, which was February the 7th. And uh, my daughter came to me and she said, mom, she said, it's time. I said, it's time. She said, yeah, and guess what? I said, what? It's the due date today. I said, really? She said, yeah. I said, well, call Nate and let him know he could meet us at the hospital. And that's what she did. And by the time Nate got there, he was drunk, full of Hennessy. And he was trying to get in the hospital, talking all loud, and they kicked him out of the hospital. And I went down there, because I waited till Nigel was born. And after he was born, I went down there and talked with Nate and try to quiet him down because they was talking about kicking him not out not only at the hospital but kicking him making him leave off the premises so he cooled down he cooled down but we had a big celebration later yeah he was drinking that Hennessy straight and uh, it was it was it was nice it was very nice next to the podium I would like to call senior defensive back Nigel Hill, and he'll announce where he was going in 2014. Uh, good morning, everybody. <laughs> I would like to thank God for this blessing, for blessing me and my family for this opportunity. I would also like to thank my coaches, uh, my family, and everyone who was there to support me. Um, and next year, I will be pursuing my degree at the, uni at the University of Washington. Go <laughs> dog. So, so when you make it big, hey, you tell me that. Look, look at this time. Look, 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 look. No, I just I'm want to. Do do That's what I'm saying. When you make it big, I don't ever want you to forget about me. That's all I got. <laughs> my only request. Dude, I'm telling you. I've been the head football coach here at St. John Bosco since 2010, so I'm getting ready to enter my 14th season as the head coach, and I'm also an alum, class of 1991. You know, the program was in struggling mode at the time uh, that I got here. I hadn't made the playoffs in seven years. We had a lot of athletes, but the culture in the program wasn't a winning culture. And so we had to try and kind of change the mindset. We had to try to get our kids to understand that we could compete with some of the better teams in Orange County. And once we were able to do that, I think we started to get the ball rolling. And then it began like an avalanche. And uh, that's the reason why we're at where we're at today. Man, I tell you what, um, it was a bunch of a collection of guys that just believed in each other. They established a brotherhood. We built a family. And there was nobody in the country that year that was going to beat us. Uh, the, the biggest description I can give of that team is I'm never going to forget them. They were the first CIF championship team that we ever had here. They were the first state championship team we had. And obviously in 2013, it was the first national championship team that we had. And the thing that I'm going to remember most about those guys is the relationships that were built. You know, I have to this day, it's been 10 years. Uh, those guys are still close to my heart. I care about them and their families. And I know that ultimately, um, you know, they're going to be there for the rest of my lives and the rest of theirs. And uh, that's something that you can never take away is that first one. You know, it's almost like uh, your first child. You remember it, your first home run. Uh, your first championship is something that's very special. And these guys mean a lot to me back then, and they still mean a lot to me today. Um, they were the first to give me a championship in any sport. So I'm, I'm just very proud to say that I had an opportunity to be a part of that and to be the leader of this program. Without question, I mean, from a historical standpoint, one of the things that not a lot of people know 
is on that day back, I think it was December 20th, December 21st, 2013, we became only the second team in the history of the CIF Southern section or the state of California to win 16 games. And to this day, out of my 13 year career here at St. John Bosco, um, it's the only team that we have had that has gone 16 and 0 and gone un unbeaten in the entire season. So from a historical standpoint, they set so many records. There were so many talented guys on that team. Um, you know, so they're going to go down without question in the history books of this program as one of the best that's ever been. Nigel was a phenomenal athlete, and one of the things that I'm going to remember from him is that he walked with such a confident swagger. He had a lot of inner arrogance, um, and then what was impressive about it was he was able to back it up on the field, never back down from any, anybody. He was the most competitive, strong-willed, hardest working young man that I've ever worked with, and his play demonstrated that each and every day out there on the field. And when we got to game nights, man, he would always tell me, Coach, we got this, we got this. And that's something that I'm never going to forget about him. And his relentless uh, pursuit of being great was something that I always cherished, you know, as an athlete. And when I talk about those kids in the past, you know, with my current players and the current guys that are in our program, I bring up a lot of times about their abilities and what they were able to do in order to get this program to where it is today. And I'm always leaning back on the past experiences that these guys had. And Nigel's one of the guys that really elevated this program, put it on the map, and made St. John Bosco football what it is today. Polly all day. Polly. Polly. Ha Polly. Polly against um Sacramento. We Sacramento. got Sacramento. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Let me run you over. Steve Boy says. Go. Yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Polly, Polly, Polly. Um, what you got to say? Tyler, my baby, you know. Love you, baby. Your bitch is trash. So I beat your bitch ass to there, fuck bastard. Uh, Mr. Uh, you know. All right, here we go. Um, I got like dollar shots, you know. Keys, yeah. Taylor, bro, keys. Um, you know, bro, Corian, you know, bro, Kevin. Um, um, Amber. Um, love my twin, Larissa, so much. Oh my God, twin. I love you. Yeah, I love you. Ryan. Love you too, Chelsea. Yeah. Oh, that's not my twin. Give me that's my hands. That's my twin. Um, Chelsea, yeah. you know, um, Amber, Vanisha, um, bros. Just all the bros, you know. Ladies, um, Nani. But this is a fake shout out to you, because, you know. Well, Durania, oh yeah. EJ, Vaughn, you know. All the bros. Basically, that's it. Yeah. Holla at me. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I got to Bosco, though, I thought it was going to be hard for this shit all boys, you know, so when I got here, I'm like, damn, man, I'm going to have to be on some whole other shit, but I be telling niggas all the time, being at an all boys school brought me more, you know, things. It was cool, you know, when I got here and shit, um, you know, it, 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 was, it was definitely different um, coming from public to private, period, you know, so when I got here, you know, we, they had us praying and shit in school. I'm like, damn, we had church and shit. But now this shit was cool. Coach Negro was my boy though, for real. Like, he helped me and my mom was out a lot while I was here and shit. Um, you know, we had like financial you know, problems that you probably wouldn't even think about because who I am and Coach Negro never, it was never a problem for him to help, you feel me? So that was something I always, you know, I love him for that, and I appreciate him, you know, to this day. You know, playing at Bosco, like, I be telling niggas, nigga, we was untouchable, nigga. Number one in the nation. They think when I say that, it's small talk, and I'm like, nah, nigga, I don't say it enough, because we was really those guys, you feel me? 
I play DB and shit. And you know, this is where all the action went on. You know, no action for me, cause niggas ain't never throw to my side. Yeah, I be telling, you know, kids all the time, if you got that gift, man, stick to it. You know, sports and shit, man. You don't just gotta be football, it don't gotta just be no basketball. You can play whatever sport you want to. You know, you ain't gotta play one sport, you can play all the sports and shit, you know? I think um, not many of my, of my yeah, you don't, and you don't have to play sport, you know? You can do really what you wanna do, but I tell niggas all the time, or kids all the time too, like, you know, you know, kids can be able to play three, di three four different sports and allow them to choose what they wanna play, you know? Football was something I fell in love with, you feel me? And I had a great experience with. I would, you know, if anybody else want to play football, I would recommend it, you know? I mean, I'll never forget that game in Alamany. When nigga mama tried to come in, press me and shit mad because I had locked, locked her son up all game. I think, I don't know if it was Deshaun Holmes. I don't, yeah, I'm name dropping today. I don't know what. It might have not been him, though. I know I locked that nigga up, too. But it was a, some nigga mama came up, you know, talking about some, some, my son, this, my son, that. And that's funny though, because you recall, like, my mom used to be that mom my first year and shit. And she had to realize, like, the type of time it was. You feel me? So she lucky my mom wasn't there, because I would have just told my mom to come on down. She, you know, we put them niggas out by like 50 or something. She was like 50 or to zero, so I wouldn't really trip. We had the game next weekend. You know, that's what it was gonna be. I think all this shit be system based. The more I play football, like, I learn. Politics in it, you feel me? Man. Don't get me wrong, if you're a great player, there's less politics on you, bro. Then, then it comes down to like what you can do for somebody or your ability to do, you know. And I just feel like I'm not a nigga for that because I'm human and I have bad days and shit. Sometimes I don't feel like doing some shit. And, you know, if I still gotta do it, I don't think football was something that I wanted to go out and do. Then you got the ability or power of niggas talking to you how they want to as far as coaches, whatever the case, you feel me? So I just chose my own politics, like, you feel me? As far as the music and the business side of shit, you know? But the game changed. I see, like, the high school players, they get paid and shit now, you know? So I definitely probably would have still played some football if I was there because, man, you can get that money, you know? And now you can create your own narratives rather than them niggas forcing you to be a certain way. So the game changed, but back in my time, nigga, it was almost like, you had to be a certain way, you feel me? Or else, like, niggas kind of wouldn't, you know, give you that opportunity for real. So I just chose something else. But I definitely had a good career and shit, you know, and it was fun for me. You know, if I could do it again, I'd probably do the same thing, you feel me? But this right here was home for it. I like to just pull up and probably visit my nigga like, I say like honestly like once a month, I try to do it like more than that, but I at least make sure my nigga whipped and dipped like once a month, bring some flowers and shit, 
wipe him down and shit, you feel me? There's also like another place where I like find peace at, you feel me, through time. Like I learned like, you know, this like allowed me to think clear and know like to stick to the mission, you know? I remember like the day my pops was buried right here, I remember that shit like it was yesterday for real. Shit was crazy, it was like hella people and shit, you feel me? I remember uh that shit was so crazy. I remember like nigga called Snoop damn near passed out on top of my nigga. We had to like get him up off him and shit. It was a crazy day for real. But you know, I I still like, you know, um, like I said, I find peace right here. And this is where like, you know, I like to visit my nigga, man. You know, our time was cut short, but I feel like I, I'm still able to hear his voice and shit with the music and shit, so I don't take advantage of that. And when I'm here, I like to play like, you feel me, my favorite records and shit and just vibe out, you know? It's something that like, I feel like me and him, you know, got understanding on. I'm gonna be real, like, since my pops passed away, a lot of niggas that said he was his homies, I think they only been here, like, one time or something. If that, you feel me? I know, I know a nigga been here because we shot a video right here, but, like, a lot of his homies ain't never been right here. I know a lot of the fans want to know where this at and shit, so, like, hopefully, like, this is a good little idea where I'm at, but I'm gonna start doing shit, like, up here on his birthday and shit. Cause I'm trying to put together like some like Nate Dog Day or something, just so we can celebrate, you feel me, the life of my nigga and you know what he was and shit. And as a parent, like man, that nigga was mashing my nigga. He was real militant style. You gonna see on, on, on his on his uh on his on his headstone, he got he got the Marine Corps logo. That nigga was in the Marine, so he was really he was real hard on us. I remember I never forget one time nigga was making a sandwich, and I was putting like lettuce and tomatoes on my sandwich. And my brother was putting just meat and motherfucking mustard and whatever, right? But I, I added the little veggies in there. And that nigga must have got on my brother's head something crazy. Like, nigga, look at your little brother, whoop, whoop, you know, just got on a nigga head. i never forget that shit, you feel me? But I, I, I knew how to make sandwiches because my mama was making them like that. So I went to Pop's house and that's how I was busting them down, you feel me? So it wasn't, it wasn't even nothing like that. But yeah, you know... This is my spot, that's why I come and just, you know, grab peace, get back into the world, get back into the wind, and keep on mashing and sticking to the plan, you feel me? Forget y'all lyrics. What'd you say? They come out here and forget their lyrics. See, what's so great, what's so great about the youngest dog is, the niggas that I'm gonna line up with and here with tonight, I've been watching them my whole life, you feel me? So, shit like this is nothing new. You feel me, nigga play cornerback? My nigga, you know, you feel me? Come on, man. Nigga, we on the island tonight. You feel me? That's all. What's even better is, my niggas is on it with me. Give me a hug. No, <laughs> just playing. <laughs> right now, we just, uh, we in the studio, working on this uh, soundtrack to this very documentary that y'all watching. You know, coming out. You know, whenever I'm saying that, it's coming out, <laughs> you know? We working, it's a non-stop grind with me, you feel me? We got a, you know, TV show shit coming up. So y'all be on the lookout, you're gonna be seeing the youngest G, the youngest dog on TV. We putting together a tour, you feel me? I just got added to a, a Crush Groove, which is a big old concert out here, you feel me? So every day it's a grind with me. I'm, I'm you know, we putting, I like, I'm putting the pieces, you feel me? Putting the pieces together, you feel me? I don't really believe in the major label deals because soon enough after them years and them time is up, you end up just like a car, you upside down and you old label, now you shelved and I know the story, trust me, I come from it. So I'm, I'm really a fan of the, the guys that it took them nigga half a decade to put that shit together or even a decade to put that shit together. But when it was put together, nigga, that shit was rolling and it was every day and nigga, you can tell that it was a grind. You feel me, niggas like Nip, you feel me? The Marathon, you feel me? Niggas like the Larry Junes and the Currencies, you feel me? I look up at dudes like that. So if you can take shit out of this, you feel me? Just know like nigga, you know, keep keep going, get your hustle on the days where I don't feel like it, I don't want to do it, and I, you feel me, I still get up and I do it, and once I get up and I do it, I feel good about it, you feel me, so it's a little shit like that, nigga, I don't, I ain't, I ain't perfect, you know, I didn't been through a lot of systems and shit, you feel me, so 
I don't like systems. So I think a label is another form of a system, nigga. I, I like to create my own system, nigga. I'm an entrepreneur, all that type of shit, you feel me? So, and I have my days, you feel me? It's just, it's about, you know, it's about just waking up and doing that shit again and knowing like, nigga, you put it together, you feel me? I got a little one now, so this all this shit for, for real. Yeah, when I first started making music and shit, I was really rapping. Me and the homies, we had like a little, a little rap group and shit. It went with our little jerking crew, you feel me? It was around the time niggas was jerking, you feel me? So shit went hand to hand. We had like a little record we made, you feel me? I remember that shit was viral before viral, you feel me? Shit was a banger, I still remember that shit. Old homies and shit see me there, we know we was joking around with that shit. All good, all to the good. When, when people hear my music now, they be like, like a real, a real like music head. If you compare my music to my pop shit, you would be like, oh, in hell don't hold his vocals. You know, he got the sound and he got the voice, but and it's just like Nate Dogg, he was just less vocal range. And that's true, <laughs> you feel me? Because I started off rapping. So my come up and delivery is more like, you feel me, up tempo, swag shit. Like, I don't know, it's more on some rapping shit, but I just learned how to use, you feel me, my actual voice into the, into the music, if it all makes sense, you feel me? Pretty much a nigga, a nigga grew up more rapping rather than my pops in a church that I stand on. You feel me? My, you know, come up and upbringing type shit. But it's crazy because I still remember the first time my pops put me in the studio. A nigga, he was teaching me like how to hold my voice for real. So let's say like a word got like the S at the end. You feel me? I don't know. It's just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to think of a little word later. I don't know. Like. Fuck it. I don't know. But long story short, the nigga was teaching me how to hold, you feel me, the letter. You feel me? Like if it's an S at the end, the nigga was teaching me how to, you feel me, hold my, you know, hold my vocals into and basically don't even say that last like like that last letter. You feel me? I don't know how to really describe it, but I remember the nigga putting me in a booth and really like really going back to that moment. So every time I really wanna like, you know, maybe tap in a certain sound or a certain feel or something. I just try to like breathe and, and think about that moment and you feel me, take it back there and really get a, um, you know, really get a level of where I want to take it, you know? My plan was never really to, uh, to make music. I always had music as a plan B though. I think that's where I like messed up or I wouldn't like influence people to do. Like don't have no plan B, go after your plan A in full. Like, I wouldn't tell a nigga to have a plan B because you really working or whatever you're doing for plan A, you, you got plan B in the back of your mind, so you're not giving plan A your full. So, you know, I assume my plan A was playing football. So nigga was hard on the football field, grind, grind, grind. But I had the studio in my dorm. So I was going back after practice making music and shit. You feel me? And I always knew I wanted to, you know, make a little bit of music. And my pop was already going in high school, but after, you know, after time went by and shit and Legacy just being all over and nigga in trouble in school, just so much going back home. I just tapped into really getting control of, of the legacy as far as, you know, getting the, the baby Nate in there, the inhale in there, the young Nate dog in there before you feel me, we got a nigga saying it the next Nate dog when when you feel me, our legacy ain't well put. Like nigga, my family's still on the east side of Long Beach and shit for real. You feel me? Like them nigga, I still got I got siblings niggas that's hungry. I got siblings I ain't never really met like that that's hungry. They look at me and they be like, they think that I'm rich at home, but they don't know, like, nigga, everything I do, even this right here, like, it's really for them because we got to get ours out, you, the real out, you feel me? Like, niggas think, oh, this and that. And don't get me wrong, you know, Pops was what he was, and he laid down a lot of shit, but the business wasn't in order, and when he passed away, niggas didn't acknowledge the business being in order or didn't even care, because other niggas' business ain't in order either. Let's get that out the way. But the fact that the business ain't in order and the nigga got niggas like me around, I feel like it was on me to not allow niggas to keep saying they this and they that and niggas to keep pillaging off the legacy when we don't even got the correct ownership of what's ours and we don't got the right, you know, shit in line. So I know that seemed long, but it's just really, you know, real shit. So if you really like following it, you know this shit is really all adding up and we really going up the stairs with this shit. He ended up giving me a call and just said that, uh, you know, he was like, I'm ready to work. I'm ready to do something. Let's, let's get together. Let's see what we can put together. So as soon as I came back from Brazil, um, right away we started working and uh, one of the first things we did is we did a small little uh, European tour. We did a show at the uh, Toyota Center 
So it was a really cool, fast way to just kind of get in with with Inhale and, um, and, and get into his world of, of what he does, you know. Uh, the first show was actually super crazy. He came out and, you know, even though he was the newest name on the bill and uh, the unknown guy, you know, he was able to come out with uh, amongst the bill of Ice Cube and, you know, uh, Cypress Hill and all the, all the big guys, you know, he got to come out and he really got that crowd warmed up for everybody. So that was a really nice moment where I got to sit there and just really see what the future had to hold. I came across in hell about a year before that, uh, before we initially started kind of talking and, and whatnot. And um, just as soon as I heard him, I was just glad to hear that throwback classic sound. And then of course, when you find out, you know, the family lineage and all that, it all came together and made sense, you know. Um, so I really enjoyed that about, uh, you know, first kind of meeting in hell and having that first impression and and right away I started asking questions about him and it turned out that uh, my other artist day one was already working with him producing records so right away I told him I said you gotta introduce me to this kid I want to I want to meet him I want to see what the fuck he's all about you know so uh, so he's definitely what's what's dope about it is that he definitely catches you with that throwback but then he's also adding his new twist to it so it's uh it's what kind of makes you want to hear more than one track of his when he, his biggest advantage is that he's a legacy act you know um it, you know sometimes it's it can be the the gift and the curse you know but i think in the way that he's doing it and he's you know also really showing the audience that he's serious about this and he loves music just as much as his father loved it. I think it uh, is, is, you know, sort of for the old school fans, it gives them that, like, you know, sense of uh, uh, of something like dope and new kind of, re uh, like a rebirth. And I think he knows where he's at musically. So we're really seeing him just flourish song by song and just get more and more comfortable. And, you know, at this point, if he hasn't quit now, he's definitely not going to quit. So... I think, you know, the best is yet to come, you know? So I first came across Inhale. Um, I was at the studio, my studio in Los Angeles at the time, uh, the Land Studios. Uh, and I was with Rappa and Rappa. We were watching like YouTube and uh, he had a song with uh, Doggy Style that was on TV, uh, excuse me, YouTube. and. Uh, and I was like, yo, this is fire, you know, it had that nostalgic um, Nate Dogg, Snoop Dogg appeal, and I was just like, yo, but who's that? It's fire. And I didn't really know his story, you know what I'm saying? And uh, Rapper was just like, yo, I know him, and um, I produced with him and stuff like that, so I was like, oh, that's fire. Um, he was like, I'm going to connect you with him, so um, I think like a couple of days later, he pulled up at the studio, and uh, I don't know, it was just... You know what I'm saying? It was good energy off top. Um, you know, the, the person in the video was the same person in real life, uh, and the energy was good. So um, I thought he was sharp, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like um, he definitely has a, a, a sharp business mind, and um, he knows what he wants. So um, I thought I thought that, you know, he, he knew what he wanted from the beginning. So it was a good impression at, at the beginning. He's reality shows, um, you know, lots of viral content, branded content with, um, you know, endorsement partners and, um, you know, really just executing uh, art in creative ways um, at the highest level.
one thing I ever told you I was this. Keep 